The Vikings have become a very underrated team from the standpoint that the Lions are now the darlings of the NFL and are a total fan favorite and are also really expected to win the division pretty handedly. So the Vikings have flown under the radar when in reality, I think they're really close to the Lions. As far as the quarterback situation goes, you can do a lot worse than Captain Kirk because he was 18th in expected points added and completion percentage over expected, which doesn't seem great, but that was more so a result of the Vikings not having a ton of success deep down field, which just was a result of their receivers not being too good at that, where Justin Jefferson, their all-world wide receiver, was 10th in deep targets last year, according to PFF, and that was their far and away lead guy. You don't get any deep threat from Adam Thielen and KJ Osborne. It's not really much of a deep threat either. Then TJ Hawkinson, their tight end, he's not really going to go deep downfield either. So there's not much success to be had deep downfield, which is where the real shining analytics will come out. And that's shown by the fact that Kirk was 13th in success rate which just looks at how effective you are versus how you were expected to perform. So Cousins is a really solid quarterback in a short to medium range type of area where he can do better than he's expected to do at a pretty high level. Again, 13th out of all quarterbacks is pretty good. And I would say that's about where Kirk lands as a quarterback. He's in that 13 or so range so he's definitely above average and is good enough to win a Super Bowl with but everything else also has to be clicking for him too. Shifting to their offensive line there's a lot to like here because they were 19th in pass blocking and third in run blocking according to PFF grades so you would like that pass blocking to be a little bit better but that is elite run blocking and really it stems from the fact that they have a top five tackle duo in the entire league with Christian Derrissaw and Brian O'Neill both being absolute elite players that are great run blockers and pass protectors. So they have no deficiencies in their game. The only real weakness they have is Ed Ingram as their right guard, who is still a solid run blocker, but just cannot really pass protect to this point. So that's one thing that holds them back, but really. Four out of five offensive linemen being good or better is a pretty good ratio. So the Vikings have a very solid offensive line. And if Ingram can just refine his pass blocking a little bit, they could really be an elite group. Next, we have their weapons, which is a great bunch. They have Justin Jefferson, who is at a bare minimum, a top three wide receiver. I would accept no less than that. I think probably more so than not he's a top two receiver it's between Tyreek and him for the number one but at a very minimum we're talking he's the third best receiver if you want to say Devontae Adams is better than him I wouldn't go that far but Justin Jefferson great receiver after him there's Jordan Addison who was a surefire first round pick and he's tasked with replacing an underperforming Adam Thielen so I think they're actually going to have a bit of an upgrade there KJ Osborne was 75th in yards per reception among all players last year, which doesn't sound the best, but when you factor in, there's 32 teams, and there's four primary options as receivers for all of them, 75th is not too bad. And at tight end, TJ Hawkinson, one of the best tight ends in football, they got him for very little as a trade acquisition. He was fourth in yards per game for tight end, and 17th in yards per reception. So again, not too much of a deep threat, but can really do work in the short to intermediate part of the field, which still has value. And they have depth as well at tight end. Josh Oliver is one of the best number two tight ends in football. He can block for days. So that's going to be nice when they want to run their two tight end sets, which is actually something they do with pretty good frequency. So they have... Three good receivers, two good tight ends. That's enough for a good offense right there. At running back, Alexander Madison, not too much to write home about. He's a solid wide zone runner. He's not great, but he's 
somebody that can produce in a system that has everything else in place for him. And the Vikings are just that. Again, they were third in run blocking, according to PFF. So they are super solid in their talent for weapons. And they have enough guys there, too, that they can sustain an injury or two. Moving to their defense, there's a lot less optimism, especially with their defensive backs, because Byron Murphy is really solid. In the past three years, he's averaged out to be the 58th best corner out of 118, according to PFF grades. So he's solid, but every other corner and basically every other defensive back that isn't Harrison Smith is a third or fourth rounder that has no experience. So it's really hard to bank on them really producing. In the case of Harrison Smith, though, he's a fleeting star that's still really good. And he is somebody that's never really been that athletic. And he's lost a little bit more of that athleticism as he's aged. But he can really tackle. He's really aware. He can play any coverage. So he's still very solid. He's no longer, again, that elite safety. But he's still very good. And... Again, everybody else, though, is a question mark or a flat-out problem, aside from Lewis Seen, who was a high draft pick for them this past season but didn't play due to injury. He has a ton of potential, though. He's one of the many Georgia players that has been drafted in the past few years off of their great defense, and I think it's safe to expect good things from him. At the very least, he's going to be a very solid third safety, but I think He could challenge for the free safety spot right now, Cameron Bynum. Not the greatest safety, and I think Scene just gives you a bit more upside. Bynum is a really solid athlete, but I don't think he's the answer at safety necessarily. I think Scene has more of the potential to be a really good player for years to come. An area where there is optimism, though, is their defensive line because Daniel Hunter and Marcus Davenport is probably about a top five edge duo in the entire league. They are fantastic do-it-all guys that are both big edges. They're both about 265 pounds, but they're also freak athletes, so they don't have any sluggishness due to being a little bit bigger for the position. They are great in the run game, and they're also superb pass rushers. So there's a lot to like on the edge side of things. The interior is also a bit of a strength because you have Harrison Phillips, who is a super solid run defender. James Lynch, also good in the run game. Dean Lowry is average in both the run game and the pass rushing aspects. So he's solid. And then they have some pretty good depth as well. Pat Jones is a nice, another big edge. And Jonathan Bullard is also a solid rotational interior player. So they have the star talent, and they also have depth around it. So it's very nice. They'll be able to get a good rotation going. They'll obviously be able to get after you on third downs with a combination of Hunter and Davenport, but it's not going to stop there because, again, Jones is going to be able to rotate in. So. They're not going to have to Hunter and Davenport, that is. They're not going to have to be on the field for every play and be gassed. For the final positional group, linebacker, it's sort of a mixed bag because Jordan Hicks is a really high-end linebacker that ranked 34th out of 81 linebackers this past year, according to PFF grades. But after him, it's question marks because Brian Osamoa was a third-round pick that has a ton of upside as a bit of an undersized linebacker with some really good athleticism, but he really hasn't played much to this point. He started getting some time in week 15 onwards, but he wasn't playing the full games even then, and that's really a small sample size of three games that he played. So it's hard to say exactly what he's going to be, but he definitely does have potential to be a solid linebacker too. And again, you can feel really safe with Jordan Hicks being a reliable linebacker. He is been doing it for years now, and he's done it in a variety of schemes. So I think it's safe to expect more good things from him. As far as coaching is concerned, Kevin O'Connell is one of the many Sean McVay disciples that's taken the league by storm as the Vikings ran the most outside zone out of anybody in the entire league this past year. 
which allows for the run game to have more explosive play potential than basically any other run concept. And in addition to that, O'Connell calls the right shots for the passing offense too, because the Vikings ran the most play action out of anybody this past season, which is just a quick, easy way to make the quarterback's life easier as it forces the defense to not just sell out to the pass. They have to also play the run a bit in the passing game as well. So O'Connell knows what to do, and that's true for fourth downs as well, as he was the 10th most aggressive coach on fourth downs this past year, according to Football Outsiders. Defensively, I think they have a good defensive coordinator as well, because to put it simply, Brian Flores had success as a head coach, so I think it's safe to assume he can handle defensive coordinator responsibilities as well. It's arguable that he was a bit disappointing as a linebacker coach for the Steelers this past year because Miles Jack and Devin Bush didn't really take a next step for the Steelers this past year under Flores, but I think it's more indicative of who he is that he was a good head coach, and it's probably more indicative of Bush and Jack that they just are not that great of players in all actuality, so they disappointed more on their own merits than through the coaching of Flores. I think it's true that if you can be a head coach, you can also be a coordinator, whereas the inverse isn't necessarily true, where you might be a good coordinator and not a good head coach. So I have faith on both sides of the ball for the Vikings coaching. I think Flores can handle the defense and O'Connell can definitely handle the offense. To summarize, there really is a lot to like for Minnesota this year. They have good quarterback play. The offensive line is definitely good enough. They have a number of weapons, and then there is some real worry with them because their defensive backs just are not great, but that should be mitigated a little bit by how strong their defensive line is, as it is one of the better groups in the entire NFL. Linebacker-wise, it's not necessarily a strength, but it's also good enough, so they have some real strengths that are going to minimize their weaknesses, but it's also going to be helped by the fact that they have really good coaching as well. So they're going to know how to put everybody in the right positions to succeed. In the end, I have the Vikings as a team that is truly deserving to make the playoffs. They're not just going to make the playoffs off of a weak NFC. In my opinion, if they make it, they deserve to make it because They're a really good team.